Hi everyone, today we've got a bit of a hybrid community roundup. So I'm going to be telling you some things that have been happening in the Blender community made by other people, as well as things made by myself, because there's been a lot going on. And also I've got some update news about some of my add-ons and products. So first things first, one of mine, I've got a new Blender channel now. Might sound a bit weird because isn't this a Blender channel? Yeah, but I've made a new channel specifically just for tutorial and workshop type content and nothing else. So no distractions, just boots on the ground, Blender content, and that's Blender Holt. And there's a video on there you can check out already to do with lighting. It's called Don't Be Afraid of Lighting in Blender. Obviously, it's about lighting because it's one of my favorite subjects. It's been really interesting getting that set up and that first proper video out because it's already found an audience that don't know about this channel, which is really interesting to me. So obviously I'll be putting more content on there over time. And just to explain the reason why I've made a whole new channel for this is because I get requests from you to do tutorial content, but because of the way the YouTube algorithm works, and I've gone on about this before, if previous subscribers aren't interested in new videos, then it stunts the recommendations. And it also creates a negative impact for future videos, which means that because you all have such different interests in different types of videos, this channel is dead effectively, which is why this brand new video on the new channel performs just as well as some of the least popular videos on this channel, even though that's got 300 and something subs and this has like 160,000. So to prevent different types of series suffocating each other, they're going to be celebrated on their own channels. And that doesn't mean the Blender videos on this channel will disappear. I'll try and keep all the content the same on here as it has been, although we're going to experiment with some new things, but it just means there'll be extra stuff available to you on extra channels. Maybe I wouldn't have wanted to have made a new channel if traditional Blender content actually got clicked on on this channel, but you know, that's just the way it is. I'm not interested in over Mr. Beastifying and watch retention culting my videos like other Blender YouTubers do. That's just how it is. But also, thankfully, I don't really have to rely on YouTube income to survive, which means I have the freedom to make choices like this, whereas other Blender YouTubers might feel pressured into those kinds of tactics to get attention. Now, next up, to make this video not just about me, I want to recommend a channel that someone else recommended to me recently called James Combridge. So this is a mixed subject channel. There's a lot of kind of really interesting things on here. I was recommended to take a look at the I tried making Unreal Engine 5's Nanite in Blender. It's a combination between like artistic breakdowns and geometry nodes type projects. So it's just something you might want to check out if you want a bit of extra inspiration. I know that geometry nodes is really popular nowadays so always just trying to find more resources for you. Also another thing I've got on my list Higsass has been carrying on making some really useful Geonodes tools as part of their Geometry Nodes tool set pack which is available on their Gumroad. This time they've been adding gizmos to their SDF nodes so we've spoken about SDF modeling in Blender before super useful. Conjure SDF is another add-on that's kind of doing this in a more dedicated way but being able to use 3D SDF shapes is really intuitive for getting objects to blend together which is really cool for like hard surface shapes where it's traditionally quite difficult to model transitions between uh, different types of geometry. So if you're into the SDF type of workflow then Higsass might be someone to check out for that. But to be fair to Joao who's working on Conjure SDF as well they've been adding some new primitive types recently so if you have brought into Conjure SDF then that's cool that's more coming to you. I'm really excited in seeing these types of modeling techniques develop over time because I'm going to find them really useful. Actually I've gotten more excited about these recently since I've got a 3D printer and I can actually fabricate things in real life so the idea of doing you know cool hard surfaced device casing designs is actually something I could do practically now so that's cool. Okay, so now about my modular workspaces add-on. Some people have been waiting for an update. There is one coming, maybe sooner than expected now, thanks to Gixo, who has been working on this add-on in previous updates, like volunteering their time to do it. I kept trying to offer them money. They kept declining. I'm going to keep trying. Basically, as I was getting on with other bits of work after the 4.3 update, I randomly got a message from Gixo that was like, oh, hey, by the way, I updated it. It now supports like the asset shelf. And they gave me like this, this video breakdown showing how you can make config with the add-on and I'm just like I'm constantly just amazed and surprised by the generosity of Gixo who put so much passion into this and just wants to help out. So basically there's an update already available not for you yet but for me that I need to review so then I can make it available for you if that makes sense. So there is one coming down the pipeline. I just need to understand it fully myself because now it's Gixo's work. I need to absorb it, try it, test it, all that kind of stuff. Oh um, depending on when this goes out we don't have much time. The Black Friday sale which is 50% off my end soon. So if you're watching this really early, use the code BF24 to get 50% off and make sure you put it zero on a tip, unless you want to leave me a tip, of course, but it might obscure the final price. So yeah, that's only until I think it's the 6th of December, but this won't be relevant for people watching in the future. Same thing with Afterglow as well. If you're watching this on release day and you want to grab it before the 50% sale ends, then do it immediately because we really don't have long. 
So this next one is a bit different. This is a community project, but it's using some resources that I've shared before. I have a rigged base character model pack. They really need an update and the rigs need to be made high quality. So that's something I should revisit in the future. But this user by the username of Duk did a really interesting fan animation video using some of the rigged characters. I won't play the music because I don't know if it's copyrighted, but it's like an expressionist piece using the characters. And so this is really something that I always find surprising. When I distribute resources to the community, I never know how people are going to use it. So it's always fun seeing like the super interesting and creative ways that my work gets used elsewhere. I just thought it's quite an interesting one. Obviously it's done to the music, so it doesn't really make sense unless you listen to it. So I'll put a link in the description if you want to check it out. But I just thought that was interesting. A while ago as well, lovely friend of the channel, Markham, did a video for Afterglow, which I was really happy to see. Oh, Curtis did a great favor for Blender Foo, ups everyone's game, great stuff. So Afterglow is basically a cheat code for renders. So what he does is he takes one of his like ship models and plays around with all the different lighting styles and like through, through the different studio environments plays around with like the light images that we can swap out in the shader editor studio cages etc so that's always cool as well like watching other users play with something i've made to see what they can get out of it and the reason why i also like this is because when you watch me use something that i made i have the full understanding of it and so therefore you may wonder if you're getting like a skewed interpretation of how useful it actually is so that's why i think it's great watching someone else give it a try with different artistic intuitions and then seeing what they can get out of it and Markham actually got some really great results of it it's always fun kind of seeing how the studio environments produce such different results like for people's models but yeah just for that might be worth sharing and also look Markham's on 90.2 thousand subs if you're not following him might be worth it see if we can help him get a bit closer but yeah hold on let me just add a bit of Markham's satisfaction about the lighting here hang on <laughs> I mean mm. <laughs> All right, nice. It's always nice seeing people get excited. Now for transparency as well, I'm pretty sure I've set Markham up as an affiliate for the product as well. So if he shares an affiliate link for that, then you can make a bit of money off of each sale. So that's for full transparency, but I know Markham, I've spoken with him a lot and I don't think he makes videos about things he's not interested about. And I'm always quite picky about who I set up as affiliates. Now, next up, we've got a video by Spencer Magnuson, who previously sponsored one of the videos on this channel as a casual sponsor. Now they've made an add-on or they've made a series of useful add-ons, but one of them was Light Painter to help you quickly like concept lighting styles in 3D scenes. He made it after watching one of my videos, Drawing with Light in Blender. Obviously, I've done a few experimental things like this, which kind of goes back to why the first video on the new Blender whole channel is about lighting, because I've kind of just stumbled into becoming this lighting guy for Blender. But this is interesting. Spencer also did a talk at a recent conference for Blender as well. So if you want to learn kind of more about the conceptual process for creating an add-on and following along with Spencer's process, then it's worth watching. He's really sweet by the way like really nice i also want to let you know that for hex scatter i got an interesting message recently now i'm not gonna say who they are because i don't want to put extra pressure on them yet but I got a message from someone saying, hey, we love Hexcatter. Me and my friend have made an add-on to make it easier to use. Because you may know if you've been using this so far, that for the most complex node groups, I've added convenience scripts in the file to help you add textures to the node groups to get them set up. Even though they make the process faster, they're still a little bit tricky, especially for newcomers to Blender. So technically, Hexcatter is quite an advanced tool when it comes to using the more complex node groups. But this person messaged and said, hey, me and my friend have made an add-on to make it easier to use this would you like to buy it off us or are we allowed to sell this tool for like a very low price they said it won't include any of the hex scatter content and they wanted to get our permission before they do anything so i spoke to chris about it and we said yeah sure do it sell your tool we don't mind we had a couple of conditions it was just if you make a helper tool for hex scatter for people just make sure that whatever you price it as it's less than the base price of hex scatter just because it'd be a bit weird having the helper tool be more expensive we won't take any royalties but we said we would like to have affiliate links in case we do like special videos about it in the future but otherwise go nuts so i don't know if they'll actually do it you know I've, we've given them our blessing i'm just letting you know that someone in the community has been working on a helper tool for hex scatter we won't be responsible for it chris and i and um, we're just managing the actual node groups and the techniques around that but if i get more news about that and if it actually goes somewhere then i will surely share it with you as well i'll tell you where to get it and maybe we can help these guys out who have put their time into making it they were super nice with the message like it was so like we promised we won't add any hey scatter content we just wanted to make it useful maybe like one or two dollar and we were like yeah do it do it do it <laughs> okay yeah no it's um that's really cool to see 
Now look, hopefully this has given you some stuff to look at. I know this isn't the biggest community roundup we've done, but I've been investing in new workflows recently and I've got a way of bringing more things to you. So I'll try and get that going. But if you made it this far, then feel free to put our classic unicorn emoji in the comments. Shows me who you are. And if you haven't done it for a while, I miss you. I see you. I see you lurking. Tap, tap. I'm at the window. Put it in the comments. Again, if you're in time, Black Friday, BF24. If it's over, I'm sorry. And I know it's annoying. Even I get peed off. I get emails from every other Blender creator and even I look at them and go, oh, just shut up already. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, stay safe and I'll see you later.